you study single slit diffraction and double slit diffraction, and then they mention diffraction gratings. But you might have wondered, what if you have triple slit diffraction, or five of them? What happens if you have n of them? Here's the diagram that shows the double slit pattern and the triple slit pattern. If you have three slits, the maxima do not change location. They do get narrower. The width of them goes down with a factor of n. So if you have n slits, it gets n times narrower. The intensity of each slit actually goes up as n squared. So it gets a lot brighter and a lot narrower. Those are called the primary maxima. You also get secondary maxima in between. If you go up to n, there's n minus two of them in between. So when you're using three slits, there's one secondary maximum in between. When you're doing five slits, there's three secondary maxima in between. But since the locations of the primary maxima do not change, the same formula, d sine theta equals m lambda for constructive interference, works for double slits and for diffraction gratings. And a diffraction grating is just a multiple slit thing with a very large head. In the examples I just covered, we were adding slits but not changing the spacing. A diffraction grating, they usually make the spacing narrower and narrower as well. As a result, the actual maxima do get spread out, so much so that the small angle approximation no longer applies, and you will sometimes get only like two or three maxima. The entire pattern will only be a handful of primary maxima, and so many, so tiny secondary maxima that you can't even see them. This leads to absolutely brilliant rainbows if you actually have one of these.